Greetings. Welcome back to Mavami News Studio here in Leitrim's Iron Mountains. I hope you've all been having a wonderful week. My name is Harriet and today I will be sharing another watercolour time lapse in my sketchbook. And today's watercolour time lapse is a mermaid because I am taking part in Mermaid. And this will be my first year doing Mermaid. And if you don't know what Mermaid is, it's a mermaid themed Instagram art challenge based on themes around mermaid. And I think it was originally created by Tom Bancroft, who is the Disney animator who created Mulan. Like I said, this is my first time taking part in Mermaid and there are many, many prompt lists on Instagram for Mermaid, created by lots of different artists who have their own unique idea about the prompts that they would like to work on. But I am doing a fellow YouTuber's prompt list, Erica Joy, and the reason I am doing Erica's wonderful prompt list is because her enthusiasm for Mermaid is so infectious and she does the most amazing Copic market illustrations and her mermaid paintings and drawings are so beautiful. How can you not be inspired to take part? So today was day one and the prompt was Geode. And when I heard that prompt, my immediate thought was Amethyst. And that's probably because I think I own a few tiny little amethyst geodes. And a geode is kind of like an egg full of crystals, but like the formation of the crystalline structure. And it's often hollow in the middle. So I wanted my mermaid to be sitting into the geode like a little chair. Perhaps she is hatching out of it, or that's where the mermaids are formed, or I'm not exactly sure, but I was wondering about proportion. And what I mean by proportion is that a mermaid is like human side and most of the geodes I've seen, I mean, I've seen quite big ones in like museums and things, the National History Museum in New York, there's some really big geodes in there. But I did do a quick Google search and I found out that the largest geode in the world is actually at the bottom of the ocean and it's near Spain. And I saw a photograph of an explorer in this huge white round geode. So I started my painting with a pink aquarelle watercolour pencil just to do a quick sketch and then I washed it out with just water to pull the pigment out of the sketch and then I realised that I'd washed the sketch out a little bit too much so I went back in with non-water soluble colouring pencils to just define some of the main outlines of the sketch so I could follow them easily when I brought the paint to the piece and the painting was going very, very well until I decided to use alcohol markers. And now alcohol markers and water-based paint is not a good idea. Alcohol markers will just bleed right through the pigment of watercolour or gouache because they are oily, so the oil resists the water-based medium and you'd have to use quite a lot of gouache to cover the alcohol markers and they're more like just sitting on top of an oil an oil surface which is never good because over time that can cause the surface of your image to crack and crumble because the paint hasn't binded properly with the paper. I do feel like I overworked this and I did get carried away the markers and I've been wanting to do marker illustrations for a while. I've been building up my collection. I got this set of um, purple toned Spectrum Noir markers and I was really excited to use them. Although I haven't done any practice with them, I've never actually sat down and just used markers. And I think that the combination of the water-based paint and the markers just wasn't really working, especially when I did line work on um, the figure of the mermaid because I ended up needing to paint out and thin those lines back out because the line work was much too dense and strong for the mystical feel of the the amethyst. It's a very magical stone. I believe it enhances your third eye when you carry it with you. I really enjoyed this piece, although I do not feel it's my best work and I do still feel like I overworked it. But that's the beauty of these mermaid challenges, that if you don't like the piece that you do one day, you have another 30 days. Well, you have 31 days in May. 
you've basically got another 30 goes at doing the best mermaid picture you can. So this is just day one. We are coming to the end of my time lapse now and I would like to thank Erica for creating this wonderful prompt list. Do let me know if any of you are taking part in Mermaid this year and let me know where I can see all your wonderful mermaid artwork. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Do stay safe and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Bye bye!